<laughs> hey, what's going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you all if you have a jailbroken PlayStation 4, a pretty neat tool called Payload Guest. Now, this is actually an application itself by Al Azif, which will allow us to load up multiple different payloads after we initially jailbreak and run hen or gold hen or mira whatever option you're choosing to get into an environment on your playstation 4 where you can run unsigned code and such so this is really beneficial because typically if you're going to run a payload you'd have to go to a browser host of some kind i still use al azif's and over here whenever you pick your option you need to select a payload here gold hen is the payload for example and for other ones there's different payloads here like separate ones for ftp mira kernel dumper all of that as opposed to going through the browser every single time the idea here is when you turn on your ps4 you can simply load up gold hen and then after that you can load up completely different payloads after that and you don't have to go through the browser you can go through an application here now the only thing is this still requires that initial push of gold hen or whichever option you're using and these are not permanent payloads or anything else by any means these are still the same payload files but it's just going to be a much cleaner and easier way of pushing them that just requires an application here as opposed to always going through the browser so for this we're going to need a few things we're going to need of course our jailbroken playstation 4 we're also going to need a usb drive to transfer a few things over to the PlayStation 4 itself, a computer to download those same things, as well as we can also put our PlayStation 4 on the same network as our computer, because I'm going to show you how to FTP your payloads over to the console as well. So for this, let's get started here on the system. If you're not familiar with jailbreaking a PlayStation 4, I will have a link down below in the description showing how to do it. But let's go ahead and get Gold Hen up and running so we don't have to worry about that. I'm just going to go ahead, go over to that same host, and just go through the process of jailbreaking the PlayStation 4 with Gold Hen. And once we're all set, we are all good to go. So now that we have Gold Hen up and running, and we can confirm this by going over and finding this here, let's go ahead and go over to our computer. I'll have a few links down below in the description, but the first one is going to be Payload Guest. This is what we're going to be needing. Now, this is just from Al Azif's GitHub page, and this just goes over a synopsis as well as an explanation showing how to utilize this, why it might be utilized, all that other fun stuff. Now, to download the latest release, you can simply come up here, Go over to the releases page, come down, and download the latest package file from the latest release. We're also, of course, going to need our payloads. Now, <laughs> this might be maybe the hardest part here. It's a bit hard to find just an overall repository finding the latest payloads for the latest and greatest firmwares. I'm looking for payloads on firmware 9.00 that are compatible with that, so this link might change in the future if I find something better, but right now I found a repository from Master S for PS4 payloads. Now we're not going to be using the PS4 payload sender, but this does have the payloads packaged up nicely. I'm going to go over to the releases tab here and just download the latest archive file for PS4 payloads. If you're having trouble extracting that archive file and you need something to extract it, you can utilize 7-zip. It's easy, it's free, it works well enough. So here we go. We should really just have two things. We're going to have the package file for payload guest and we're also going to have the PS4 payloads. Let's go ahead and get the payloads extracted. We can right click this archive file and if using 7-zip, extract it to its own folder. I now have the folder right here, so we can enter this folder. It should be within files, and you just really need to find the folder that matches your firmware version. Now, I'm going to be using firmware 9.00, so I'm going to use the 900 folder. And right here is all the payloads that we're going to need. Actually, more than what we really need here, honestly, but I'm going to grab all the payloads because why not? Now, the first thing we'll need is a USB drive because I'm going to show you all how to run the payloads from a USB drive, but we're also going to need that to install Payload Guest. So at this point here, just grab a USB flash drive of some kind, and we need to make sure it is formatted to either XFAT or FAT32. Now, I recommend XFAT when it comes to PS4. It's just going to be easier that way, but you can right-click, go to Properties, at least on Windows, and look for the file system. 
This one here clearly needs to be formatted. So if you need to format your USB drive, make sure you back up any data you care about from this drive. I don't care about the data here, so I'm just going to right click, format, and format this to XFAT. And default allocation size is fine, quick format is fine, and there we go. If we check the properties now, it's been formatted to XFAT. At this point, we can go into the root of our USB drive, copy, and paste the payload guest package file in the root of the USB drive. It should just look like that. Now, if you want to set up your payloads for this, we're going to create a folder in here in the same root of the USB drive and call it payloads. Lowercase, all one word, just like that. You can go into the payloads folder, and at this point, copy and paste any payloads that you want to run. Again, payloads are firmware specific. So for example, 5.05 or 5.05 payloads will not work on a 9.00 system. 7.55 payloads will not work on a 6.72 system. You have to find payloads matching for your firmware version. So since I know that my payloads I'll need are for firmware 9.00, I'm going to go into the 900 directory. I'm just going to highlight all of these, copy, and paste them into our payloads folder. So at this point, our USB drive is completely prepped and ready for payload guest. We'll be able to install it, and once installed, we'll be able to run any payloads in this directory. Awesome. So let's go ahead, eject our USB drive safely there, and we're going to bring it back over to the PlayStation 4 and hook it up. Over at the PS4, plug in your USB drive. Now go ahead, go over to settings, and we're going to install that package. So you can either go through debug settings, game, and package installer, or if you're using Goldhen, just go up to Goldhen, package installer, and it's going to do the same thing here, and install that release of payload guest. It's thankfully a small package file, so it shouldn't take more than a few seconds like it did right there. Once it's all ready to go, make sure you have your USB drive plugged in with all those USB payloads on hand, and launch payload guest. And there we go, check it out, it is as easy as that. So these are all the payloads which are going to be available here, and you can just run any of them easy enough. And again, the nice thing is we don't need to go through the browser for all these. You can simply load up payload guest and you'll be able to run these here. So let me see, let's go ahead and find one that we can utilize here. How about this? Let's go ahead and disable updates because I don't want to have firmware updates accidentally run on this console. So if you want to run a payload, you just select it, you press the X button, disabled updates. It's as easy as that. That's all there is to it. That's how you can run a payload. If you ever have to refresh the payloads on here, for example, if you end up adding more payloads or move some, you can also press the square button and it should refresh the page on here or wherever it might be. So as you can see, if I go to like page, you know, two or three and hit the square button, it should just refresh like that, go back to the first page. There we go. So that's all there is to it when it comes to payload guest on here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove the USB drive. I've taken it out, I'm going to refresh the page. And as you can see, we're getting a sad face here because there's no payloads available. Now, running any payloads off the USB drive is great, but some people might be wondering, well, I don't want to always have this USB drive on hand. Isn't there an easier way of doing it? And there actually is. We can actually just use the console itself to host these payloads, which is really cool. So I'm going to show you all using FTP how you can transfer these payloads over to the console, and we're going to do the exact same thing. So let's go ahead, close out of payload guest. And if you have Goldhen up and running, you can enable the FTP server. Now I have a video showing how you can use FTP on a jailbroken PlayStation 4. So just real quick here, I'm not gonna go into super granular detail, but it's easy enough. We're just going to go ahead, go over to our settings, Goldhen, make sure your system is on the same network as a computer that you have and enable FTP server. And there we go, we have it up and running. That's our IP address, that's our port number. Keep those in mind. For this here, I'm going to be using WinSCP. This is just a tool that I like to use. It works well enough on Windows, and again, it's free. I'm gonna have it linked down below in the description. Now, once you install and launch WinSCP or your preferred FTP client, you can go ahead and add your PS4 however you want to. So you can just go into new site, set up everything properly with no encryption, 
host name, anonymous login, port number, all that fun stuff, and save it. Now, I already have it all set up here. So again, these are my settings here. That is my own IP address, local one for the PS4. It's going to be over port 2121, and we're going to do an anonymous login over FTP with no encryption. Now, once you log in here, it should look a little something like this. On the left, you're going to have wherever you're going to on your PC, and on the right, you're going to have your PS4. Now, this looks a little bit daunting, but it's easy enough here. To transfer your files, your payload files, over to the PlayStation 4 itself, so again, the nice thing will be we don't have to rely on that USB drive. We can go over to data and in the data folder, we're going to right click, create a new directory and we're going to call it payloads, lowercase, all one word. And inside of the payloads directory, we're going to copy and paste all of our payloads here or whichever ones we want to use. So here I'm just going to go over to files 900 because I'm using firmware 9.00. I'm going to highlight all of the payloads and upload them. You can just, for this, even right click, upload, hit OK, and there we go. It's as easy as that. So at this point, all of our payloads for firmware 9.00 are on the console itself. We can now close out of WinSCP and go back over to the PlayStation 4. We don't have to have the FTP server running anymore, so we can now disable that. And now at this point, just go back over to Payload Guest launch this and at this point check it out it now says slash data instead of slash mnt for where we have everything but these are the exact same payloads except it does not have them from our usb drive anymore so this is really cool because again at this point here all i have to do if i want to run a payload if i'm happy with my selection on here i just have to go over to settings go to the user's guide go here run gold hen one time that's all i have to do and then once Gold Hen is running for any payloads you want to run, you just use the payload guest. So, you know, we did this before, but let me go over to the enabler. Let's just do the opposite of what we did before. So if I want to enable updates, for example, if I ever want to update past 9.00, I can just press the X button here. And there we go. Enabled updates. That's all there is to it. We were able to launch that payload successfully. We didn't have to mess around with the browser yet again. We were able to just run it from here. It's really useful. So let's do one more thing. You can see here that the icons don't look super pretty. They're just all these question mark boxes. So you can actually choose to customize this if you want to, just with some simple PNG files. So that's also pretty simple to do. To look at this further, let's go ahead and close out of payload guest close out of there, and if you're going to transfer them either to a USB drive or FTP, it's completely up to you. I'm going to transfer them using FTP, so I'm going to come over here, enable the FTP server again, and go back over to my computer. Now looking at the official documentation, it ends up citing a PNG file right here, where it's really just pairing a PNG file for the accompanying payload of the same name. If you ever want to build a meta.json file to scan for everything, you can do so as well. And this is just an example of it, but this is really going to be our file structure right here, where the PNG file we need is going to be the exact same name as the payload file itself. For this, I do have two PNGs. I just downloaded these off of Google and I'm going to choose where I'm going to plop them in. So you just need a PNG file. It has to be .png. That has to be the format of it. It can't be a JPEG, can't be a bitmap, has to be a .png image. Next up, we're going to transfer these over to the system or to a USB drive. So to copy and paste these over, for example, for these PNGs, we can just grab these and transfer them over to the PS4 like this when we FTP to it. And there we go. We have one of our PNGs right there, and we have another PNG right here. Now, in order to pair this with one of our payloads, we have to rename it to the exact same thing. So for this here, let's say for my update one, I want to associate it with something. Let's say I want to associate this with disable updates. I would click on this here. I'm going to copy out just the file name itself, disable dash updates, copy, and now go over to your image file and we're going to rename that. So I'm going to paste this here and there we go. We now have this renamed as disable update.png. So that is exactly what we want. For this other one, I want to associate it to history blocker. So the exact same thing right here, 
I'm going to copy this out of the historyblocker.bin file name. Click here on our PNG image, paste it. So as you can see, the image has the same name as the payload, but it's just the payload is .bin and the image is .png. If you wish to do this on the USB drive, it's the exact same thing here. You can go to your USB drive, and even if you want to delete payload guest because you don't need to install it again, you can just delete that. But you can go over to the payloads folder and copy and paste these PNG files into there. Now we're going to do the exact same thing if you're doing this from USB. You just grab whichever file name you want. So mine is going to be, let's say, disable updates. So same thing, I'm gonna copy this out, disable updates, paste it. So we'll make that disable updates.png, and there we go. And the same thing here, we're going to turn this into history blocker. So copy, paste right here, and we now have images for history blocker and disable updates. Let's go back over to the PlayStation 4 and make sure this works. Yet again, once we have all this sorted, make sure you have your USB drive plugged in or you have all the files transferred and renamed to the PS4 internally and launch Payload Guest. Now this is actually a good example of what might or might not work. So some of your images might not work here. Now for this one, I know it was a transparent PNG, but it seems to not be working or displaying on here, which might happen. And you might just have to convert it or use another image file. However, if we go over to the other one, which I know works, we can go to History Blocker. And as you can see, History Blocker has a PNG image associated with it. And if we want to run this, I can press the X button, running history blocker, and at that point, unable to get user ID list. Okay, so that's just a thing with history blocker itself, but it's fine, I'm not too worried about that. We were able to at least run that payload. But that's about all there is to this, so there we go. It's as easy as that. I hope that this does help out many people, and I do hope many more people start using Payload Guest because this is a really basic but very nice application where, again, it completely solves the issue of having to go through the browser to load up our payloads and a payload possibly working, having to refresh the browser, reboot the system, what have you. At this point here, again, you just need to, in theory, boot up your system, run Gold Hen or Hen or Mira, and then you can run all the rest of your payloads through Payload Guest. It's as easy as that. Anyways, that's about it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone.